How's it going? Today I'll be showing you how to make this game of tic-tac-toe using HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Vue.js. This will be the final product and I think it's a good example of how we can use Vue to update certain elements in the page. We have things like the noughts and crosses themselves, the message box on top and the fact that these will turn green when there's a winner. Alright, let's get right into it. Alright, so the directory structure for the game looks like this. We have one index HTML file for the actual game itself, as well as two folders, CSS and JavaScript. In this CSS we have one file called master.css, which is empty right now, but this will contain all the styles for all the elements in the page. And we also have uh, two files in JavaScript called square and game, which will be two classes um, to make up our model. So uh, a square represents one of the squares on the board, and a game represents an actual game itself, and obviously a game will have nine squares. So we'll get right into the HTML here. Um, I've obviously just linked the CSS, as well as the development slash experimental scripts for Vue, and our two models, or our, our two classes, and a empty JavaScript tag for just testing and debugging. We'll now make the constructors for both the game and square classes. So inside square, we'll just make a class template and we'll call this class square. And in the constructor, we'll have two properties. Uh, the first one being value. So this dot value. And this will be either a O or an X. Um, but for now, it'll be just null because when the game starts, all the squares will have no value inside them. Um, and we also need a property called is highlighted, and this just means whether or not the square is highlighted in green when there's a winner. So that's it for the square class. Now we're going to game and make a new class template, and we'll call this one game. But down here, we'll just uh, set two global properties of the game object. The first one being O, which represents an uppercase O, and the second being X for x. So these variables we can use later on um, for comparisons and to set the value of the squares. Um, but in the game in the game object we'll have five properties. The first one being in progress which is boolean and this will basically state whether or not the game is in progress. So if there's no winner and the game is not a tie then the game is in progress. So when it starts up obviously the game will be set to uh, sorry in progress will be set to true when the game starts up. And we'll also need a winner property. This will be either uh, O or X if there's a winner. But for now when the game starts, there's no winner. But eventually this should be either an O or an X. We'll also need a current turn property. And this is going to be equal to, again, either an O or an X. Um, but it just means whichever symbol, um, you know, whose, whose turn it is. So when the game starts up, for simplicity, we'll just say that um, every game starts with O going first. So we'll say game.o as the initial player to start. We'll also need a moves made counter. And the moves made basically just says how many moves have been made um, in the game. So if there's five squares that have been filled up, then that means there's been five moves. And we can use this later on to check whether or not the game's ended in a tile or not. We also need a property for squares, which will be an array of size 9, containing all these squares um, in the game. So this will actually be an array of this type right here. Uh, to do this, we'll just, uh, we'll just map every empty element on the array, and we'll just write this in here. So just like that, and that will make nine new empty square objects um, in our squares property of the game. So that's it for the game constructor. We'll go back into index and make a new global variable uh, called active game, and we'll set this equal to an instance of the game, and check the Chrome developer tools and see what we get with this one. So if we just log out active game, we'll get an, a, uh, a game object with all the instance variables as well as the one for squares containing nine empty squares with no value and they're all not highlighted. So in the next part we'll go over the actual methods of the game class.